good morning internet. Today we woke up to something fresh and cool that a lot of people have been looking forward to. Um, it's definitely in its earliest state, so I can imagine it's going to change quite a bit from what you see here. But it's cool to see a little interface for uh, what we've been doing with text in the Discord bot. Uh, so they've given us some sliders instead of having to type in things in a number you can just slide stuff um, I don't like that there's not a way to save presets and when you go away from the screen and come back it it all resets to default but so as you guys can see there is somewhere to type down here you type in whatever you want and we'll see what it comes up with but before we do that all of these sliders are going to define what the result is going to be here and uh, one thing that makes a big difference is this one right here by default it should be on nine because when you generate something it's cool to see all the different variations and to choose which one you like best because AI is totally a roulette style generator uh, where you never know what it's actually going to come up with and when you do these really big arrays uh, there's a higher chance that you'll get something that you really like and that's how uh, artists like myself who have really prolific output um, you know I'll render 50 to 100 images and release one of them kind of thing um, so from a power consumption standpoint that likely is kind of wasteful now that I'm thinking about it but we'll see uh, how that compares uh, in the long run to other styles of creative uh, process uh, because as you guys know the results that I've been sharing have been like WTF, WTF kind of stuff um, where you're like oh my god how did you do it um, so how I did it was not just typing something in and getting a result. It was many, many hours of work with like a single prompt that I slowly changed what words I was using and I slowly changed what um, the output that I was using. And there's other things you can do with the seed, etc. which did they just remove that? They did. What? I took a screenshot like two seconds ago of this and there was a seed function down there. Good thing I took the screenshot. The seed function's already gone in like three minutes <laughs> of me opening this and starting up OBS to record this. Um, but I'll walk you through these settings real quick. Obviously, I'm not showing you any results because you guys know what comes of that, and I'm not going to do my process here. Uh, I have my own ways of doing things, and yeah, that's not an open source thing. These projects are. The way I work is not. Um, the width and height, obviously self-explanatory and I like that it gives you a little preview of what you're actually going to get there um, so the model is 512 by 512 and when you start to go beyond that when you raise this at all you're going to th see things double um, so what I mean is if you raise the width then there might be two subjects or three subjects or even four and if you go all the way to the edge here it, you might have like 10 copies of the thing that you're prompting all in a row because it only has the ability to to process a chunk of 512 so I exaggerated a little bit because it goes up only to 1024 here which is decent but if you crank 1024 1024 yeah you'll get a larger image but you'll probably get doubling and or quadrupling of your subject when you go up there so it's actually better process to oh my gosh I moved the wrong screen um, better process to keep these at 512 to get your image that way and then to use various upscalers um, to get to the next one. The width and the height will actually determine the composition as well so if you're doing a landscape it's probably a good idea to bring that width uh, that way but when I do some of the prompting on the other processes I lower a number instead of just raise them like this one I would make it 360 or whatever Let's see if they let us do that. Well, they let me select it, but will they let me type there? Nope. So they won't let us do um, sm smaller heights and widths, and, and that's kind of a, a bummer. Uh, the CFG scale, as it describes here, which is nice because when we've been learning this stuff, it hasn't been explained to us very well. The higher it is, uh, the more it's going to stick to the prompt, and the lower it is, the more gestural it will be with what it returns. So CFG scale down to, you know, zero one uh, it's going to throw void 
AI shit at you where you're like, I have no idea what the hell it's giving me. And then as you go up here, it's going to try to stay more rigid. But when you crank this, uh, in my experience, it starts to um, blow out certain things and details. And sometimes you'll see like just a mess of, of like white and black sharp colors. It looks like a super sh over sharpened area. So that stuff tends to happen when you go up to the higher end. But right in the middle or even as high as like 12 or 15 is a good good place to be for uh, really like coherent stuff. And then this is for more like exploration and experimenting down here. Um, the number of steps, uh, this is by default set to take one credit. If you increase it and there's 50, if I was to put it to 100, it would take two credits. If I was to put it to 150, it would take three credits. That's the simplest way to explain that right now. If you want to use half a credit, put it down to 25. Um, I have actually seen really, really good results come out of uh, things like stable diffusion with as low as 20 steps. So keep that in mind that you can experiment with a lower number of steps uh, and, and see if that gives you good enough results uh, depending on where you're putting the CFG scale. And you may be getting along just fine with something much lower like 20. Um, so the number of images I do suggest using 9. Oh, there you go. When it's on 1, that's why the seed thing is there. So anything higher than that, you'll lose your ability to see the seed. But the seed is pretty much like the weighting of the noise that it starts in the beginning. So areas that are all black and white randomly like a cloud, they'll be different if the seed's different. It'll be a different color black and white cloud. Uh, so by giving it the same black and white cloud, which is typing in a very specific number, you will have the ability to always get the same general weighting in an in area. So if it tends to put like dark, large objects in this area on this seed, no matter what you type in down here, it'll compose it in such a way that there's a dark, lar large object up in this area, if that makes sense. Um, so the sampler method, um, there's a bunch of them, <laughs> a lot of them. And I don't know how they all affect things much, but I'm sure that somebody's going to put out one of those comparison grids that everybody's doing for these things lately. So you would basically run the same prompt and the same seed over and over and over, and you would just change this each time. And if you do that method, then you're going to get to see what the difference between them is. So I'll either have to run that myself or find somebody that does that. Um, so now that's all the settings for the actual dream process and all this stuff that we're seeing here they're saying is going to be embedded in a bunch of other software you're going to be able to run either your apps through this or this through your app i don't remember which which one it is uh, but the history here i won't go into mine because it'll show my own stuff but it says that it clears it out when you close your browser so that's kind of weird um, it's a bummer that it's not like mid journey was where when we got access to the website all of the stuff we had done in the discord was in there um, none of the stuff we've done in the discord as far as i can see is coming into this It'd be nice if it did. Um, they give you a little prompt guide here, which is kind of a laugh, honestly. It's not really giving much information, and, and given the UI, it just looks like terrible. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why that was the choice for this, but they're just slapping this stuff together so people have stuff to look at. I'd love to be um, a participant in the UI and UX development of this stuff because that stuff's really important to me, and I know other people as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, EMAD, obviously, reach out to me. I'll be reaching out to the teams as well to see if I can get involved on that side of things. So I'm not just criticizing, I'm actually contributing. So they give a little FAQ uh, pl where to contact them. And then at the bottom here, uh, those steps that I was talking about, how much it'll cost you to use it. So real quick, we'll hop back into Dream, and I'll remind you that if you were to... Uh, increase this to 1024 by 1024, I believe that would take four times as much. So that would be four credits. At least two credits, if not four, I believe four. Yeah, that would be two credits, right? Because that's one, and then doubling some, and then doubling it in the other way. So that would be four credits. That makes sense. Cool. So uh, really, really sparse, but I feel like that's just enough for anybody that's excited about getting into this to see and get ready for when it launches on Monday. Um, if you guys are uh, having any additional questions about this stuff that you want to throw in the comments, just let me know. I look forward to hearing from you guys and showing you more stuff as it comes out. Mike Flex, out. <laughs>